Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Ross. In this video, I talk about mast cell activation syndrome. I describe what it is, what the causes of it are, why it's an issue for some people in chronic Lyme disease, and the steps that you can take to treat this condition. If you'd like what you see in this video, be sure to subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button. And if you need more information about the topics I discuss here, there's a link to a full written article I have included in the description for the video. Treat Lyme is supported by purchases you make through Marty Ross MD Supplements. There is a syndrome called mast cell activation syndrome. All right, and I have a whole article about it, and I'll probably show it to you here in a minute. You're going to want to go look at that. So mast cells are an immune cell. And inside mast cells, historically, over time, most of us learned that mast cells are where histamines are made. So they are an immune cell that we thought pretty much was just activated by things you were allergic to. And when you would land, when the pollens or food particles, uh, cat dander, um, etc., that you're allergic to would land on a mast cell, it would cause these mast cells to do a process called degranulate, where they would release histamines. All right. And those histamines could give you hives, watery eyes, itchiness, could even trigger asthma, um, hot, um, rashes, um, all kinds of things, all right? All right? Now, there's research, though, that is actually shows that we had too limited of a view about what mast cells really are. And what actually turns on mast cells is things we're allergic to, but also infections. And that could be yeast infections, virus infections, Lyme infections, okay, infections, chronic infections, okay. The other thing that really turns on mast cells is stress. And one of the key things that I have found to be very helpful when I've got some with mast cell activation is to work on them on stress reduction techniques. And that might be going to see a counselor. That might be getting rid of emotional toxins in your life. I think you know what I mean by emotional toxins, okay. It might be to learning how to meditate so that you can calm things down, okay? But you've got to deal with stress. So number one, deal with stress, okay? Number two, when I've got somebody that has a lot of, um, in my practice, when somebody had a lot of issues with food sensitivities, I might do something called an elimination diet. All right, so what an elimination diet is, is we have you eat a very bare bones diet where it is you basically stripped out anything that anyone might have ever had an allergic reaction to, and you take it out for three weeks, all of those foods. And at the end of three weeks, you start adding in a new item about every two days and see if you react to it. Now, what happens is in the period that you're actually off of the foods that you're reacting to, you become more sensitive to it, okay, because your body um, no longer remembers how to adapt to it. And so when you put something back in you're really reacted to, you're going to react strongly, okay? So one of the things that you might do is an elimination diet, just to identify what you're allergic to, and until you can get some control over the mass cell activation syndrome, you might strip out those things out of your diet for which you can clearly identify you react against, okay? Um, so, uh, so number one, de-stress. Number two, elimination diet, okay? Number three, you need to get on something that's going to help stabilize your mast cells. All right, so mast cells, again, release histamines, and they release them when they get stimulated, okay? But you can stabilize them, so they're not going to release or make histamines as easily. And there's actually two herbs that can be helpful with that. One is an herb called quercetin. Quercetin is known as a mast cell stabilizer. And um, the, what I found helpful in my practice was to have people take a 250 milligram pill, two pills, three times a day. Now it will take about two weeks to even a month to get maximum effect because it's working over time to stabilize those mast cells, okay? And then you would want to combine that, especially if you have really bad mast cell activation, with another herb called luteolin, and that's L-U-T-E-O-L-I-N. <laughs> I'll show you the article here in a minute. It's all written down, okay? 100 milligrams uh, two or three times a day on that, okay? That also is a very strong mast cell stabilizer, okay? All right. The other thing that you want to do if you've got a lot of um, GI symptoms with your mast cell activation, you might want to look at getting on something called chromalin. It's a prescription medicine. It actually um, works at the gut level to stabilize mast cells as well, too. 
You might want to get on some antihistamines like um, um, a Zyrtec, for instance, um, on a Benadryl. You might, uh, there's uh, medicines that we use to calm the stomach down, um, something called cimetidine, which is designed to actually lower acid levels, but also blocks some histamine receptors too, okay? So you might want to look at doing those. Um, the other thing is don't forget to treat your infections because remember, they're stimulating the mast cells as well too, okay? And one of the biggest things that can stimulate those mast cells are too many yeast in your intestines. So your doctors should be working to see, are you, do you have too many yeast in your intestines, okay? Now, I know I'm covering a lot of things. So I'm going to show you the article here in a minute, okay? In terms of determining if you have too many yeast, don't trust cultures of your stool. A lot of doctors use those, but they don't, they're not accurate, okay? If somebody's got a lot of sugar cravings and a lot of food sensitivities, um, they, there's a good likelihood they probably have too many yeast in the intestines too, okay? I'll show you an article that you can look at that helps you figure out how do you diagnose it and how do you treat yeast, but I would definitely take a look at that too, okay? All right. So that's a lot of stuff I just said. Let me show you the article here real quick that you can take a look at, okay? Um, here's my article that I've written on mast cell activation syndrome in Lyme, okay? All right. And uh, in here, I talk about what can trigger it, Lyme, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And so I, I even lay out the symptoms. Uh, I talk about even the testing is not that good. It's interesting that you actually found something that was positive. Often people, you just make a diagnosis of this based on the clinical symptoms, okay? But here's what I say, decrease stress, get rid of the things you're allergic to. That's why I mentioned the elimination diet, okay? And here is the, my elimination diet. I have a, an article, a whole article about how do you do an elimination diet. Just click on that right there, okay? Make sure that you are treating the various infections. And so if you're wondering if you have yeast, click on this how, how to diagnose and it will lead you to a chapter where you can find information about how to diagnose yeast, okay? All right. Get rid of toxins. Um, I like to have people lower cytokines, uh, which are inflammation chemicals also released by the mast cells, and I like using curcumin for that. Here's where I talk about the antihistamines. Here's where I talk about quercetin and luteolin. And I kind of, even though it's number seven in my list here, I kind of have that as a frontline treatment, okay? and then be on a low histamine diet, like you've mentioned here too, okay?